Hello, my friends, I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, as you can see, we're starting a new series. This will be a three, maybe four part series on a hands-on experience of five miles of hell. Now this is a famous trail. A lot of riders wanna come. It's a bucket list trail for riders. It's here in Green River, Utah, beautiful scenery. I mean, today has been all time already. We've got rain, the dirt is perfect. These sticky rocks are, are cleaned of the sand. It's been so much fun already riding. And what I wanna do is break down the major sections of this course. Now. We are on the first section. We're gonna get right into it with a breakdown on how we approach. We're gonna give you the easy lines, the hard lines, doing everything we can to make sure we get dialed in for your trip to five miles of hell. So let's get right into it. Starting with the first major section that you're gonna experience in five miles of hell, you will see this 90 degree paint. Now, of course, the whole trail, we're following these white dashes. This 90 degree paint means you're turning that way. Now, obviously, we're gonna break down a few lines here, but I remember the first time I rode this, I actually went that way. The paint wasn't so great. Nowadays, it's painted in perfect. You can see exactly where you're going and plan out your route. Now, this is that first little experience that you're gonna have at five miles of hell of the gnarliness of this terrain. This is a pretty decent sized wall. I mean, you can tell by me standing here, hopefully, that it's pretty steep. And uh, we've also got kind of multiple lines. So what I wanna do is break this down for you. So we're gonna start with the easy line. Now, first thing we do, we're always looking for flat places to start. We're always looking for an advantage with our tires. The flatter it is, the better we're gonna be. We don't wanna be starting halfway off camber on a ledge. We wanna give ourselves the highest likelihood. So actually what I would do is run it a little bit past this 90 degree mark. Now as you can see here, we've got a nice flat section, pretty flat right here that's gonna line you up perfectly for the easier route on this section. The biggest thing I wanna talk about here is our approach of this section. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, the longer the run in, the easier it is. You guys all have probably heard my saying over and over, but lack of momentum exposes flaws in your technique. If you wanna make it really hard on yourself, start right up against it. If you're feeling a little sketchy about it, start way back here. I mean, you could put your rear right on the edge of that cliff and get a nice long run in. The longer the run in, the more momentum you're gonna have, the easier it's gonna be. Now, it is a little bit off camber. So the first thing we're gonna focus on is which peg we're waiting. You're gonna notice here that I'm waiting my right peg as I enter. This is off camber, it is a uh, side hill entrance. We wanna be putting all our weight on the outside of the bike and leaning the bike out away. The common thing is lean the bike in to the hill. You lean the bike in, the rear tire will drop. We wanna lean it out and hold that good traction. Now, as we enter in, the main focus here on this type of a ledge or any type of ledge that we're gonna experience throughout this whole series is understanding where we input our power. The main focus on stuff like this is learning the power input needs to be before the obstacle. So this is the obstacle. You need to be inputting your power here. Most riders try to input in the obstacle. If you are giving it throttle in the middle of the obstacle, you're gonna spin your tire. I'm coming in, slipping my clutch. I'm right on the edge of that friction zone, loading the engine, loading the flywheel, using that outside peg weight to hold traction, hips back coming into this. Then as I enter in, I'm reducing throttle and letting that flywheel kind of pull me up. Very steady, I'm not taking it all the way off because obviously this is quite long, but I am reducing the throttle and looking for tractable control. Now as I come up this, my body position is hips back, heel outside peg dropped, pushing hard through that outside peg. And as I come up the face, you're gonna see my body position move forward towards the bars. We move our body in relation to what we're riding, standing up into the bike to counteract that front end. Now, one main thing I wanna talk about here, as we get to here, we have to turn that way. Now, this is a very key point to everything that you're going to do, whether it's at five miles of hell or your hard enduro experience or technical terrain experience. The most common thing, the most common mistake that I see riders make is they never run their bike deep enough. They tend, most amateur riders tend to aim with their front tire rather than their rear tire. So when you're aiming with your front tire, we get up this ledge here, and your front tire makes it to about here and you think you made it. 
So everybody lets off. Well, your rear tire is still hanging. So you go, oh, I actually didn't make it. We're starting to roll back. Often we don't have that fundamental clutch control that I teach all the time. So you kind of get back on the power, spin your tire, and now you're going down the hill the direction you don't want to be going. Aim with your rear tire. In fact, I would even run it clear to here. I'd run my front clear up into, I mean, that rock, essentially. The deeper you get the rear, the flatter the area is going to be, the safer you're going to be. It's much easier to move back downhill than it is to move uphill, right? So as we pivot our bike over, it's a little bit downhill here. You can see we've got a, one last little ledge. Again, I wanna talk about momentum. We pull that bike back. We want this bike back as far as we can, right to the edge of the trail here, to be able to get a nice long run in, safe run in, a nice momentum run in. Now, one more time, this is even more off camber than the first ledge. Now, the importance of, first off, your left outside peg weight. Notice how it automatically, I'm talking about it, and I automatically, you'll see my knee come back and my heel drop, even when I'm not on the bike. You'll see it in the video. I lean back, I've got the hips back, I'm dropping my heel, I'm pressing through that peg, giving all the outside peg weight possible. I don't want to lose traction and drop down there. We want maximum traction. So it does seem counterintuitive, but you wanna lean your bike out, press through that outside peg. You've got a nice safe side here. Now, we don't wanna be leaning into the hill when we're committing to this section. We really need to commit to centered position on the bike, using that balance control. Our entry should be controlled, centered, smooth, using all of those techniques, those balance, body position, and power delivery and collection techniques that I've talked about over and over in my previous technique videos. You hold on to your fundamentals, you work your fundamentals, and they come into play when it matters, right? So one more time, we come in, we're waiting that outside peg, big load of throttle here, now, as we start to get into the hill, same thing. We start to move that body position forward from the back position as we gain momentum. We want to move that body position forward. And again, we can see these are a little bit off camber. They want to shoot you this way. So we need to keep that front tire light and floating above these so they're not pushing us in one direction or the other. They're keeping us nice and straight, trusting our rear tire. I'm telling you right now, it's grippy out here. It's rain today, but I'm uh, you'll see, I'm, I'm gripping through all of this because first off, I've got an IRC tire on. Second off, I'm using proper form more than anything. It's all about proper form. You could probably get through this with a moto tire pretty easily. So maximum traction here, pressing on that outside peg, maximum momentum, letting that bike pull you. That is the easier route. Now we're going to break down the more technical. All right, so we are on to the more advanced route up this first major section at five miles of hell. Now, as you can see, we're back at the 90 degree turn. So there's a couple ways we can approach this. You'll notice on my first run, I go a little wider. I set myself up higher and working through the easier section, we wanna give ourselves all the momentum. Now on this more advanced stuff, we're turning and we're almost using this inside little bit of a cliff here as a bank to gain our speed. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna come a little bit wider down at the bottom I'm kind of use this as an apex to set myself up for the big wall, hitting it all in one so I don't have to turn and pivot and do all the stuff that we did on the first one. Now, again, this is a more advanced run here and it's more intimidating than anything. Now there's two ways that you can hit this. And commonly, I would bet most of you who are looking at the video right now probably would say, let's run it right here. Now you can see we have less of an initial ledge, nice little flat spot where we can get on that power and gain momentum and then running it up this cliff, this red cliff. This gap here is something that I see so often. Riders see a gap, whether it be in between a track, two tractor tires on an enduro cross track or in between two cliffs on a trail. They tend to move to the gap. The gap isn't always the best place to go. Now, this one, as you can see, this is almost an S curve. We have to move up here, turn to the left, then turn to the right at the top. The problem with that is you're executing two turns in a pretty dang steep cliff. Mid cliff, you're executing turns, which isn't the best for riders who don't have that ultimate trial skill. Now I'll show you both ways, but I think you will see as I hit this section, you're, I'm not hitting this as clean as I am the other way. Now the other way is, 
again, we're kind of using that where, where that 100 or that 90 degree paint was and we're cutting in tight. Now, again, this looks like it's not gonna be the best. We're getting really close to this inside wall, but we have a nice flat spot here. The reason why I do this is even though initially it's not quite as good, even though initially it's a little bit of a cliff and we also are a little off camber, because I trust in my tires, I trust in my traction, I'm waiting that left peg here, pressing through. Because I trust in my ability there, I have an, an option to gain momentum in the obstacle more so than I do here. So when I go through the crap, I have to get on that power early and then hopefully have enough momentum to lug me through. Whereas this, I kind of get a second blip of power. And you'll see, I'm actually able to track from this second blip. I come up through, hit this flap spot, get on the power and let that thing lug. It's a little more true. You gotta think it's allowing me to be able to hold that momentum and track through this. So again, I'm kind of using this second section here to really get that momentum and pull me through. Now. On top of that, you're gonna see, this is quite steep. May not seem it on video, but it is quite steep. This second bit here, it takes a lot of body position to stay ahead of the machine. So once again, we're using that body position back as we gain momentum, those hips back, pressing through the pegs, dropping our heels. Then as we come up, into this section, this is where we start to move. Knees over toes, we're bringing that weight forward, staying above the machine in relation to what we're riding. This is very steep. The only way we can stay above the machine is get up over the front of the bike. Now, I'm not saying throw your hips forward like this. My hips, you'll see, are, will stay stationary the entire time, but I am moving knees over toes and holding that front end down as I track up, hopefully, no dabs in this situation. So. This is a technical section, but once again, we start hips back and we drive through the same way we would in any obstacle. The fundamentals of understanding of body position, balance, power delivery with collection is extremely important here. And uh, again, that fundamental practice will pay dividends when it matters. All right guys, here is the live breakdown of the approach of the easier line, okay? So now we're down in the bottom. First thing, we got a little bit of a ledge. Same as I always said, you wanna come in with momentum. Centered, balanced, a good amount of throttle, and then a lug. Here we go, listen. Hear that, and now we're lugging. Boom, we get to here. Now we can go foot down, we could also do it trial style, but most of you guys are gonna be doing it foot down. We work that bike back, just like a three-point turn. Pulling ourselves as close to this edge as we can. Now. You can see here, I'm not 100% straight for this. And I mentioned, I want you guys to be as straight as possible. Notice I'm using the uphill side for you shorter riders. Uphill side to help you with your inseam, right? Pull that back. Now, notice, I'm pulling that thing back. I have a nice, smooth, straight run in. I want you to listen to my bike here. I'm gonna come in smooth, onto the power initially, and then I lug all the way. Remember I said run it deep. I'm also focusing on a heavy outside peg weight. It's downhill here. So I'm focusing on a heavy outside weight peg weight. I'm dropping that right heel, setting myself up. You're gonna hear heavy revs here, and then a lug on the way up. We wanna gain momentum initially, then use no throttle all the way through, or very little throttle for that matter. So go ahead and listen, here we go. And remember, we're running it deep, we're running it deep. Can't stress that enough, here we go. Okay, right there. I was a little bit out of balance. Now, I could have corrected and gone for it, and I would have been fine. But that was a great example of knowing when you're not perfect, especially if this is something that's scaring you. If you're not perfect coming in, stop. Flip around, turn the, turn the bike around, get yourself set up clean. We wanna have a nice, straight, true run in. Again, I could have just gone, but I, I want you guys to see that even if you're feeling sketchy, you don't need to send it. Like the whole when in doubt, throttle out thing, that's the worst saying ever invented. <laughs> it's when in doubt, use proper form, okay? So here we go, it's all good. I'm gonna switch this thing around. No shame in going all the way down. Of course, I could have done a pivot turn or whatever. 
done some front end hops. It's fine. Throttle up. No problem about turning around and taking a little bit longer. Once again, we go deep. We roll that bike back. I'm nice and straight. Same thing. Heavy revs coming in. Smooth throttle through. Running it deep. Waiting our outside peg. Here we go. Hear that rev. Boom. Look how deep I ran it. I'm not going to worry about that cliff and not making it because I'm running it past. Now I work the bike over. Now notice here, we roll back, slip the clutch, and once again, we want to set ourselves up nice and straight. Nice and straight, making sure we're in the best position for maximum momentum. Once again, you're going to see my left foot drop, heavy throttle coming in, lugging at the top. I want to keep a nice light tire waiting the bike this way, waiting the outside peg. Here we go. Lug. Very nice. All right, guys, now we are on to the more advanced line. This one is definitely a little more challenging. And I want you to notice the difference in the power output, how much I'm giving it to get up this stuff. So first we're gonna do the crack that I talked about. Here we go. I'm going wide here first. Now I like momentum. We want momentum here. Heavy. Woo! Now you can see there, I came in heavy with throttle and even coming in heavy, because I had to make such a turn coming up that, you could see my rear tire started to slide. That's very important to understand. Even though I had the momentum, because I came into the crack and I have to make a sharper turn at the steepest part, it actually made it harder. So. I'm going to do the other line I talked about as I pivot turn around here. The other line is right here. We're going to hit this flat spot. Same thing you can see. I take the corner and I want momentum. So I'm coming out nice and wide, trying to find that momentum there to get the speed and pace to hopefully allow me to no dabs. It's tough to no dabs every time, to be honest. Here we go. Heavy power, heavy momentum. You can see how much better that was. No dabs with ease because I didn't have to turn so much. I come in with heavy power. I'm dropping those heels, keeping that weight back. And then as we get to the top, I bring that weight forward and let that bike lug and pull me. That's a good section. Here's the thing, guys. This is kind of a, a gatekeeper, if you will, of five miles of hell. A lot of guys get to this place and they go, wow, that's a heck of an obstacle. Using your fundamental technique, you can conquer this obstacle. We want momentum. We want proper body position. We don't want to over rev. We want to keep that bike in that tractable power. These rocks will pull you. Work on your balance, work on your clutch control, work on your body position, work on learning that clutch up, getting that front end light. All of those major techniques that we've gone over time and time again come into play when it matters. Here we are, it matters right now. This is an amazing trail. I hope you guys tune in next time to our part two of the five miles of hell series. Uh, I really enjoy breaking this stuff down for you guys. And I hope that you guys get out here and get a chance to try it. Until next time, thank you so much for following. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep shredding.